Being, I'm having a discussion today with my daughter, Michaela. I asked her to interview me, I suppose, about what's happening in Toronto, Ontario, Canada at the moment on the professional front relationship to me. The Ontario College of Psychologists, which is the board that regulates the practice of psychology in Ontario and hypothetically protects the, pro the public interest, has levied a series of what are, in essence, lawsuits against me for um, unprofessional conduct pertaining primarily to my social media communication. And so they have decided in their wisdom that I am to be required to undertake a series of re-education lessons uh, designed to ensure that I communicate in a manner they deem appropriate. And I have told them that there are no circumstances I can imagine under which I would be willing to do that. And the next step is to bring me before a public disciplinary hearing and then to suspend my clinical license. And so I'm making all of this public because I think people need to weigh in on whether I'm an alt-right Nazi harmful, uh, you know, bastion of of intolerable political thought with a troll-like army of pathological followers or whether the college itself is a corrupt nest of s social justice vipers hell-bent on envy and revenge and using the tiny fraction of people who are complaining to put forward their own brand of personal pathology and vindictiveness. And, well, I'll make everything public except for that which I can't do on legal grounds and let everybody decide for themselves. That's the plan, because I might be wrong, and uh, I guess if I am, I need to learn how. In any case, Michaela is going to talk to me for 90 minutes, and uh, we're going to walk through some of this, and maybe you'll find that interesting, and maybe you won't. Um, why would you care? Well, that's, I guess, what you'll figure out if you listen to the talk. One reason might be, it's my opinion that the regulatory boards that govern professional conduct in Canada, particularly in the US as well, and in the West more broadly, have become so corrupted by the woke ideology that the professionals you depend on in moments of crisis for legal advice and medical advice and psychological counseling, some of which can be life and reputation saving, they can no longer be trusted because they're being required by the professional bodies to lie to you in the service of this warped, um, radical leftist ideology that's now become, what would you call it, mandatory for right speakers wherever they might exist. And so that's why you might want to listen and decide for yourself whether you think that might be true. Um, I've been preparing my public response to the decision of the Ontario College of Psychologists to require me to do mandatory social media communication retraining. Um, they've, they have, the College of Psychologists is the regulatory board for the practice of psychology in Ontario. There are a variety of regulated professions, medicine, dentistry, teaching, architecture, psychology, that's not all of them. And these regulated professions have a board that's appointed by the government whose mandate is to protect the public from unprofessional behavior on the part of the members of the regulated professions. And people can submit complaints to those bodies if they believe that they've been treated um, unprofessionally or unethically or otherwise inappropriately by a college member, so a member of the relevant profession. And uh, the college has been after me nonstop with complaints since I rose to public prominence in 2016, although not once before that in the 20 years that I practiced as a clinical psychologist. So this isn't the university that's after me like it was in 2000. 17, 2016, this is the College of Psychologists, which has started pursuing me in 2016 and has never let up. Now, what happens is that people, anyone anywhere can submit a complaint about me for anything I've done or said, hypothetical or otherwise, and then the college can, and that doesn't matter if they're a client of mine or ever have been, or if I've had any dealings with them, or even if they're the person who has hypothetically been 
harmed by my behavior. Mm. Um, and the college has decided to pursue a sequence of such complaints, even though it's in their power to dismiss them as vexatious or frivolous, which is what I asked for, on the grounds that my social media communication has caused harm to people. And so they've essentially taken out what are the equivalent of more than a dozen lawsuits against me. And I say they're equivalent to lawsuits because the penalty for being found guilty of such misbehavior is quite serious. It can involve re-education, public apology, or even the removal of my ability to practice or to describe myself as a clinical psychologist. And of course, it took me about 10 years, all things considered, to get licensed. It's a very difficult process, and I'm not inclined to give it up lightly. In any case, they have been after me to a tremendous degree in 2022. I think there's 13 or 14 complaints, each of which culminated in one of these lawsuits. I'm represented by legal counsel. There's so many of them that they're difficult to keep track of. Um, I probably went through 400 pages of documentation this week, and you ask me how I'm doing. Hmm. Well, you know, um, first of all, I found it extremely difficult to keep my, my rage under control because a tremendous amount of my time is being wasted. It's extremely expensive. The allegations are not only utterly preposterous, but entirely political in nature. And then I was also afraid of it. You know, the first complaint came in 2017, 2016 in December, at the same time the university was after me, and at the same time the Canadian Revenue Authorities were after me for a mistake they admitted making six months later. And you remember that was an extremely stressful time and I was accused at that point of inappropriate personal conduct in relationship to one of my clients. All of that was uh, dismissed, by the way, without hesitation, although the college did decide at that point because they needed to decide I was guilty of something even though I wasn't guilty of what I was, of what I was most seriously accused of. They decided I hadn't handled my email properly at that point when I was getting thousands of emails a day. Yeah. Um, and that that made it difficult for my clients to get a hold of me, even though I had given every single one of my clients my personal phone number and could, could contact me by text, which is something, by the way, that psychologists never do, you know, for, for obvious reasons. So in any case, it's been a continuous stream of investigations and legal defense since then, um, I found that kind of accusation of serious personal misconduct unbelievably stressful in 2016. It certainly mm -hmm. contributed to be, me becoming ill. Yeah. And then I didn't really want to revisit it, you know, and so I started going through all that documentation last week so that I could lay out everything that's been levied at me.